Sometimes I feel like Japan is advanced in the wrong directions. <laughs> like what is? Hello. Konnichiwa. Onamai wa? You can't talk. Okay. <laughs> you really want this thing roaming around your house, y'all? In this episode, I get rained on, see an art, and eat some corn. It's <laughs> so good up here, man. I met this weird sushi dude when I was at the Shinkansen station that's kind of nearby here. Yo, what is this? <laughs> Check out those abs. <laughs> I don't know about this, guys. Here they've got a way that you can take your smartphone and like look at the poster and then it like makes him jump out, but it's complicated to get it to line up. I don't know. I might have to time jump this so it can make sense. Just making up memory cards here. <laughs> like, this is a nightmare. Look at this thing. <laughs> it looks like a Nintendo 64 animation <laughs> that like just dropped out of hell. <laughs> Man, Japan's weird. <laughs> Katie's leaving, guys. We're at the train station in Hakodate, and she's going to be getting on a bus from the train station. Gonna take a bus to a ferry, to a Shinkansen, to a train, to my feet, taking me home. It's going to take you a little while. Yeah, it's going to be about eight hours of transit. And we just got up this morning and headed over to a little cute mom and pop with only a mom toast morning set place. Mm, and it was I, I have quite to good. say, it was quite good. It was quite I, good. I feel like if you put someone into that toast situation, they might not appreciate it as a first timer. But as a person who's had like hundreds of toast sets, mm. that was stellar. It was really good, sorry. I didn't tell you that I, while we were eating it. I, just, I don't disagree. It was really good. I was just thinking to myself, this is this is like quintessential. I, I would show this as the example. It's interesting. It's just like off this little alleyway. Like it's a nondescript little place that has, apparently has a cat that we didn't get any footage of because he's elusive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you got to see him. He did. Yeah. He just shot through the room. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask you what your... Do you have any moments from the last few days that you've been up here hanging out that, like what, what do you think about the time that you spent up here and like you know what I mean did you enjoy any specific aspect of it or anything like that or I enjoyed thoughts? putting the tent up in the daylight I enjoyed camping for the times that the camping was good for the most part I've wanted to go camping for a while and we're starting to have the equipment to be able to do it so I was psyched and that was fun I think that we could probably do more in the future as for riding I enjoyed that I got comfortable and was like doing little little hip moves and enjoyed slow-mo. I only missed one stop sign, probably yeah, several. Yeah, you only had like one scare. Only one scare. Yeah. You don't know how many scares I had, <laughs> but I can tell you there was at least two. I'd say two where I felt this feeling of like complete terror that you've known since you were a child. <laughs> like inside of you there's a fear that you've carried with you your entire life and when that enacts it's like you you're connected to that fear you had when you were little um i had that a couple times on the bike but i enjoyed the mud the mud was fun albeit that i used more energy than i wanted to but the mud was really kind of fun i kind of wish your behemoth uh that scooty puff jr wasn't the uh, one who was having trouble there i mean like he's just not built for that yeah it's but, just the wrong tool for yeah. that job yeah um, everything was really good. I think the worst part was probably, oh well. The annoying neighbors when we were Yeah, camping. annoying yeah. neighbors. I don't think I really care about the worst part. 
uh, I need to get better at sleeping for camping. I need mm. to figure that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You more comfortable something, Yeah, something wasn't completely right, but mm. it was still really fun. So you're headed, we know, you know where you're going. I have no idea where I'm going. I don't have any idea what I'm going to do. I might stay in Hagarade, I might leave. I have a few things I need to get done. Scooty needs an oil change. I have a couple things I want to buy, and I, then I don't know. And I have to look at the weather and figure it out. So from What's here- What's that feel like? Just not knowing. Yeah. yeah it's, it'll be fine. Hmm. <laughs> That's not how you roll. Well, I- You did a little bit on this Sometimes I feel like I don't have that choice, that luxury. Mm. I, I, everything's written for me. Sure. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I have, I have an idea, a couple ideas of where I want to head, but I just don't know how they're going to get there. But they'll get there eventually. I just have to look at weather and just decide, do I have the right equipment and the motivation at the moment and the energy? Because I am freaking tired right now. Mm. <laughs> I'm still tired. So we've been going pretty hard. So I don't know. We'll find out, I guess, the next time I make a video, which will be in a few minutes. <laughs> and I guess I will see you in the next, 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 next video, maybe? I don't know. At some point you're going to show in up In the again. future. It was good seeing you. It was great seeing you. <laughs> Have, Have a nice trip. <laughs> Welcome back to the Eric Solo Show. It is now time to pack up the scooty because everything got unpacked so it could get cleaned and charged last night while Katie and I stayed at the hotel. And I'm going to jam everything in here just perfectly because that's how it fits, just perfectly, <laughs> with not an inch to spare and then try to knock some chores out and then hopefully make my way north out of Hakodate to a new part of Hokkaido. All right, Scooty's all packed. Now I can roll. It actually takes quite a while to do that. You gotta get everything in just the right place. And every time you pack it up, it's different because dirty laundry is in like different places. So like the weights and all everything have to be like readjusted for how the laundry and everything is sitting inside of the bike. So it's this whole thing, I'm not really super good at it quite yet, but it works. I can get down the road. I've just come a bit through Hakodate Shi, and it's not the most fun place to drive. It's just really car centric and the roads are kind of big and there's trolleys that are coming up from the right. You never know if you're gonna get hit by a trolley. <laughs> I love the trolley, but driving with it is just a little bit challenging. But let me tell you what, the freaking nationalists here go hard because they have got not a little black van but like a full-size tour bus and they are blaring music out of this thing at an insane volume this is a little unsettling y'all <laughs> just find these things a little bit like ah, i don't know about this <laughs> these dudes are not my kind of dudes I'm gonna guess I'm probably not there kind of dude either. The purpose of the stop is that I'm trying to make the GoPro situation better on the scooter so that when I run time lapses and stuff that are on the GoPro, not on my arm mount, it's a whole thing. They are more level, if you haven't noticed, they're a little bit crooked. <laughs> and it's just because of the way that the GoPro mounts onto this and the way that the official GoPro mount functions. There's too big to mount on other things that I have mountable. So I bought another mount that has a ball joint in it. So I can put this up here and it actually fits on this pole and the ball joint helps me level things out a little bit. Let's just hope that we can have some footage that is a little less crooked <laughs> and a little more like realistic with the bike motion and stuff rather than, you know, crooked. All right, so I don't know if that view is perfect because the windshield is kind of in the way, but there's really a limited number of places I can mount the camera on this type of motorbike because of all the body paneling that they have on it. So I'm just gonna roll that for now, and if I come up with a better idea, then I'll come up with a better idea. I came over to a bike repair shop, and I asked the dude if we could do an oil change, and he said, just a minute. So hopefully we can get an oil change because Scooby needs one, and then we can dart off out into the woods and not have to worry about any Scooby maintenance for a while.
I have decided to get out of the southern part of Hokkaido today. We'll be leaving the Hakodate region and this entire little peninsula that sticks out down into the ocean and headed north. And the current goal is essentially to work my way over to a national park that's in the middle of the Hokkaido Island and check that out. But that's a little bit of a drive for today because it's already 1 p.m. and I think that drives like seven or eight hours. So what I'm gonna do is work my way somewhere in the middle, which will give me about a three or four hour drive and about 200 kilometers. I've picked a campgrounds that looks kind of nice. It sits on a lake but i'm a little worried that they might not have any availability for you to stay because it's not just like a free whatever campground it's like you got to pay and like deal with the man and stuff kind of campground so we'll see how it goes if it doesn't work out when i get there no big deal i'll just keep moving and i'll find a like small hotel or something or just find another campground or you know something there's got to be there has to be more options <laughs> so that's kind of the plan for today and it should just be kind of a nice drive looks like the weather is going to be totally fine and aside from just getting beat up by the sun for a while i think it should be pretty pleasant check out these clouds by the way they're looking all right i am doing a brief stop before i leave town to stock up on some provisions and you get some man wipes <laughs> in case i end up not finding a shower and i forgot to mention i think that uh scooby oil must change guys so I got a couple thousand kilometers before I got to worry about another Scooty oil change and any more Scooty maintenance. And I think it's just important everybody to maintain your Scooties. Yeah, treat them right. These are the flavors of the body wipes. And this time I'm gonna go with peach <laughs> because it says that it is super popular with the ladies. <laughs> I'm going up over the same hill that I went over over and over when I was going between the lake and the shower. And as usual, the sign just says, be case roll lightning. I mentioned that yesterday and it's just like, guys, like if it's always a lightning advisory, it's never a lightning advisory. And I'm going to assume if I can see blue in the sky, I'm probably not actually in that great of danger of <laughs> being struck by lightning. One of the fun things about being on a motorcycle is when somebody doesn't pay attention and they try to merge over, sometimes they don't realize you're there. And that just happened. This little orange van just about hit me. But luckily, he didn't. And I beat my horn and it startled him and he moved back into his other lane. You gotta stay on your toes, that's for sure. Hokkaido feels like a really big place, and it kind of is, but sometimes you get these vantage points where you can see things that you assume are really far away. Like back here in this direction is Komagatake, which is the volcano that I have been camping in the shadows of for the last week or so. And then if I just rotate this direction, you can see a coastline over there where Date is. And that's like a completely different part of Hokkaido, but you can see the two of them with just this one clearish day <laughs> where it feels like, okay, that drive is like four hours or something. And it's just wild that you can see such a grand distance so cleanly with some of the points of view that you find along the coastline while you're driving. This is where I stopped to make that footage. And then I looked up, check this out. That's a train station. I love these little teeny tiny Inaka train stations. I was like, oh, it's gotta be a bus stop. No, a train comes here. I mean, it's just a tiny, tiny little shelter. The timetable shows that there's 11 trains that come a day. Both directions total, 11. <laughs> Compare that with the Yamanote line where there's a train literally every two minutes. <laughs> when I stopped, I saw some clouds in the sky and I was like, that looks like bad news. Kind of got stuck in some rain. <laughs> But it's only gonna be a few minutes. I checked the radar and it's like just barely passing through for just a moment or two. Not a big deal because I've got a little shed I can hide in. <laughs> and I got to see a train come. Like what are the odds? The little diesel one car, one man operating train. Nobody got off and nobody got on. <laughs> When the train came, I learned a thing. This closes down so people can't walk across. And this to me, as a Tokyoite, 
looks like the kind of infrastructure that they would have for train staff. That would not be a thing that a passenger would walk on, but I'm pretty sure that these things close to remind passengers when trains are coming not to go down and cross over this to go to the other platform, because there is another platform. And I guess there could be a time where you would get on a train over there. Maybe the train coming the other direction is on that platform. <laughs> I'm not intending to come off snarky. I love it. I think all this is super charming. These Inaka train stations are just wonderful. The train lines, I want to just ride all of them. I want to get on the train, go from one end to the other and just enjoy everything out of the way. But uh, I got a scooty and so, you know, I got a different agenda at the moment. Just as I was loading Scooty up again, as the weather was clearing up, it started to rain again. <laughs> and it doesn't take very much rain to get you really wet when you're moving at 30 or 40 kilometers an hour. <laughs> so I am drenched, but I suppose I will air dry quickly as long as I keep moving. It's about four o'clock now, and I have about an hour and a half left before I get to the campsite that I'm not that confident I'm gonna be able to camp at. I do need fuel though, and that's making me a little nervous because I'm kind of out in the middle of nowhere going over what I think is a small mountain range, and I haven't seen fuel in a while, and I don't know exactly how far away I am from any. I could always stop and Google it, but that's not really gonna change the circumstances very much. The good news is that the weather is beautiful now, and I am basically completely dry from the shower that I got earlier. I've come down into a town and there's a bunch of gas stations here, but they're all closed. And I am getting some serious range anxiety here <laughs> because <laughs> the low fuel gauge has been blinking for like 50 kilometers. And I'm not really sure how far I can go on it. Look at this, another closed gas station. Yo, <laughs> this is no good. So, oh, here's an open gas station, 179. Damn, it's expensive. <laughs> it doesn't matter, we're gonna go because I don't wanna be standing on the side of the road with a Scooty who is thirsty. All right, so I Googled it. Scooty has a 13 liter fuel tank and I just put 12 and a half liters in. <laughs> so it's close, <laughs> but we all good. <laughs> Okay, so here's the situation. After I got gas, I stood at the gas station. I was like, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do here because I'm kind of at a point where the roads can go in two different directions. Good old fork in the road. And I was like, can I make it to this campground before it is dark and also before 7 p.m. and also a whole bunch of other things because once it's dark, you can't set up there apparently, according to like what people were writing on the Google reviews. And also you can't use the shower facilities past 7 p.m. and the uh, staff isn't there for some reason after certain times and it was complicated. So like I was, on a, I was on a limited time budget and I probably could have made it, but it would have been a rush and I don't have any food with me. So if I got up there and there was nothing to eat, eh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Like, and I don't know how far away there was from convenience stores. And also I still wasn't even completely certain that the place had availability. And I could have called and asked, but the thing that stopped me from going down that road was, I don't really intend to hang out there. I wanna go someplace else. And I don't think that just stopping late one night or you know, 7, 8 p.m. or whatever to camp and then getting up in the morning immediately and packing everything up and going again is gonna be fun. <laughs> it's gonna be a pain in the ass to just like deploy everything and then put it all back together and then blah 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 and again food mostly food because I haven't eaten anything since I had breakfast with Katie this morning and that was at like 9 a.m. and it's now like 5 30 so I gotta eat something so I decided that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive into Sapporo and as much as I don't really want to drive into Sapporo, it's like there's hotels there and I'm going to stay in a Toyoko Inn, much to the glee, I'm sure, of some of the folks on our Discord. <laughs> on the way there, I was like, okay, I need to find a restaurant. So I used Google like a long find me a restaurant, whatever. And it was like, okay, you can, here's a restaurant. And it didn't know the hours. So what it turns out to be actually is a Michinoeki that has got a little restaurant inside of it. And I arrived at 526 and they close at 530. Uh, so I just went in there and I hit the Michino Eki portion because I wasn't gonna ask the lady to cook me food. She's already like broke down all our stuff. 
So I just looked around and I found they had some breads and they had some little fried balls of corn. <laughs> and then the dude was like, let me hook you up with a piece of corn. I mean, he, just, he just gave me a piece of corn. Here's a piece of corn, probably because they had a bunch left over from the day. So now I've got a piece of corn. I've got some breads. I've got some fried balls with corn inside of them. And it said something weird about them being like a cheesy kabocha something. So I'm, we'll find out what that's all about here. Notably on the way here, I had been driving along the coast a lot of the day, but this has taken me a turn away from the coast and up into the mountains. And as I'm cruising along, there's just volcanoes. <laughs> like volcano here, volcano there. It's stunning. It's like hard not to like look and just like watch the volcano go by. This is really beautiful up here. I have got a garana as well. Figured I could use a little bit of caffeine to keep me rolling because I still have another two hours of driving. Okay, let's get into a kabocha. Well, no, no, a kabocha. It was a tomoro koshiboru. This confused me a little bit because it was sitting where there were supposed to be potatoes. Now, I would rather have had potatoes than deep fried these, but it's pretty good. The corn flavor is really a lot. Mmm. Yeah. All right. And then uh, the pastries are just like normal pastries. I think maybe somebody local made them since they're the Michinaki, but it kind of tastes like this morning's pastries. But it doesn't matter. There's nothing else to eat out here. So I'm happy I'm eating anything. I haven't seen a convenience store in a while. I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> that was an absolutely wonderful experience with the free corn. They have a sunflower seed as well, just right next to where I was filming. And I took some pictures. I think I was able to get the sun to line up this right with these photos and get a couple that maybe were okay. At least one I think is good. But for real, are you serious? Like, are you seeing this volcano? <laughs> That's a nuts. Stunning. Super beautiful out here. The bad news is, of course, it's gonna get dark and I'm already worried about deer. That's not necessarily a traditionally beautiful sunset, but the way that the clouds are purple wrapped around the volcano is quite something. I'm feeling pretty lucky about the timing I'm having right now. Going over this pass, I have lost the beautiful blue skies and entered into the world of, I hope it doesn't rain. It's gotten a lot colder. I really should probably pull over and put on a coat, but I am not doing that. I don't know why. <laughs> just because I'm not smart. Hopefully this is just clouds hanging around these mountains as opposed to storms hanging around the mountains. Because being cold is okay and being in the dark is okay, but being cold in the dark and wet, it's just sort of a bummer. All right, I did the responsible thing. I put on a coat. <laughs> I won't freeze to death. Darkness has fallen, but luckily I haven't seen a single deer or, interestingly enough, a sign warning of deer. So there must be something about this area where there are few or not any deer. I'm definitely passing over another mountain range and every once in a while we just hit a lot of fog, which is fine. It just looks a little spooky. Thankfully it hasn't rained at all and I checked the radar and it doesn't look like there's going to be any rain at all. So that is fortunate. All right, it's about eight o'clock and I'm rolling into Sapporo now. And it's always cool to roll into a Japanese city and just see how it looks. Even at night, it can look amazing. They just look so distinct with the red lights on the buildings and everything. Thankfully as well, there's a bypass that runs along the strode that enters into Sapporo. So you can actually get into the city fairly quickly. And this is the thing that I was a little worried about is just dealing with having to sit at stoplight after stoplight after stoplight after stoplight. And this, that only gives you stoplights basically at the bridges that you are encountering that are letting traffic go back and forth across the river that you're going along the side of. So I'm just buzzing straight on in and it doesn't look like it's gonna be any trouble at all. As much as Japanese cities do kind of similarly all have the same vibe, 
there is something distinctly different about Sapporo. I think it's the width of the streets and how much of a straight grid the city is. There are others that are somewhat similar, but Sapporo is extreme in those regards, and it gives it a different flavor for sure. I am in my little business hotel. <laughs> And man, sometimes do you ever feel like the future, they're just making things harder? <laughs> like, real talk, let's have a chat. <laughs> like, the check-in process has just gotten ridiculous. Like, it used to just be like you just walk up to the counter and you're just like, hello, my name is blah, blah, blah. I made a reservation on the internet, which I did. And I'd like to check in. And then they look at the thing and they find your name and then perfect. Then maybe they look at your ID if you're a foreigner in Japan, but sometimes not, kind of depends. And then they give you a key and you go in and like maybe you had to fill out a form, maybe. I don't know, whatever. Depends on how you checked in like with the internet. This time they've installed these computers to make the check-in easier. It's chaos. And the the girl just wouldn't let me check in, like just like talking to her. And she was just like, okay, well, uh, use the machine. And I was like, okay. So I went to use the machine. And it's just like this long multiple moments of chaos where the machine wants me to write my name in Japanese. However, because I filled out my form through booking.com, like for the thing, and like, so it's like, I can't, and I, you can't type in English. <laughs> like, so the machine just won't like take in my name and like she's refusing to speak to me in Japanese and she's using really horrible baby English. And I'm speaking to her in Japanese and she's fine with it, but like she's for some reason not processing that she can speak back to me in Japanese. It's so strange when this happens, this weird like linguistical handshake. Like maybe she was told you can't talk to foreigners in Japanese or something. I don't know what's going on. But anyways, it just turns into this nightmare. And then like, she is now like, write your name down. I write my name down and my handwriting sucks. And she can't read my name because she's not used to like Klein and Eric. Like she doesn't know these words and I've written it like hastily. And she's like, is that an R L I? I can't read this. And she's trying to figure it out. And she did, it's just chaos. And if it had just been, I'd walked up to the counter and she'd asked me my name. I told her my name. She would have been like, okay. <laughs> we would have rolled just fine. And then I had to like, she did all the stuff on the computer and then I had to do a bunch of stuff on the same computer and like on the computer I get like the thing. I still had to do the things after she did the things. It's like chaos. What is happening here? So anyways, the future just needs to like slow down a little bit. I'm tired of the future sometimes. The good news is I'm in Sapporo and I've got a little room here and I'm going to maybe go out and find a snack and then come back and fall asleep. Because <laughs> that's all the energy I've got left for the day. Check this out. Yeah, I got one of these little bendy. Ooh. Oh man, I should have filmed this like, like scary story time style. Uh, the only other thing, because I'm in a Toyoko Inn. Oh, it doesn't tick. They usually go click, 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 and you have to take the battery out of the clocks. But this one, this one's not bothering me. <laughs> You ever feel like you're taking crazy pills? I think I might be wrong about the problem downstairs being the future. Those robots might be our saviors from the staff who seems a little bit like they don't quite have all their balls juggling in the right directions. So here's the situation. When I got here, the parking area for cars is one of those huge tower things. And like your cars go in and it's like a big elevator system and you can't put a motorcycle in there because like the things move around and the motorcycles will fall over. So it's like four cars only. So there's a parking attendant dude there and he waved me over and parked me like kind of like in front of the hotel like not in front of the doors or anything this is space so like he put me there with a couple of other motorcycles and i was like okay all right and he's all good and i'm all good and he checks everything and he goes away and i take all my stuff out of my bike and i come in and i go through that check-in process it was just like oh, what's happening and during the process the computer asked me like do you have a parked vehicle and the only button to press is no i don't so i was just like okay i do have a parked vehicle so like i told the lady i was like hey i've got a parked vehicle but it's a bike not a car and she's like don't worry about it just press the no button got it so i pressed the no button and then 
we went on with our day, right? And like everything eventually worked its way out. So the, the backstory to this is before I came, when booking.com, like when you fill out like the thing, like I'm gonna book a thing, it has a special box. It says like, if you have any special requests. And I typed in there, like I have a motorcycle and I'm gonna need parking for it. And okay, that's fine. So like I submitted all that like hours before I got here. <laughs> An hour after I checked in, I got an email that said, we don't have any motorcycle parking at this premises. You need to find parking on your own. What? What, 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 what? <laughs> First off, the attendant guy put me there and I'm already parked. Second off, the girl, I, like I was told her, I was like, I have a bike park here. And she was like, okay, so no problem. And third off, like the bike's already parked out front with a bunch of other ones. Like what's happening here? So I think what has happened is that they don't know that the person that used the booking.com thing has already checked in. Like they don't think I'm here yet. <laughs> I have a key, I'm in the room. So I replied and I was like, my motorcycle is already parked out front of the hotel. Like if there's a problem, mail me back. Like uh, <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, I went across the street for dinner and just got a curry rice from Lawson. I think Lawson, Family Mart. I think it's Lawson, yeah. And it's just, I got it because it's a vegetable curry rice. And if you know me, vegetables are my favorite food. And I expect it to be fairly subpar since I microwaved it. <laughs> That's how you're supposed to do that. But I mean, like, how good can rice be, right? Hmm. Oh, it's pretty spicy. Uh, it's okay. I mean, it's a 500 yen curry rice from a convenience store. That's fine. And I also got a green smoothie situation here so that I could get my vegetables, my one day <laughs> vegetable juice. <laughs> I just like vegetables, man. And uh, now I'm going to do all my data backups and I'm going to go to sleep. And I wish I could sleep for 100 years with how tired I am, but I can only sleep for like maybe 12 hours. <laughs> I'll end up waking up in seven and a half like I always do. I didn't think this was going to be a problem in Sapporo, the biggest city in Hokkaido, but shit, there's bears here. Wait, hold on. Let <laughs> me get another look. I think it's a dog. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Alright, it's 1 p.m. and I am now finally starting to get out of Sapporo. Did a few housekeeping things today with some things I had to pick up at Yodabashi Camera, and then I took a ride down to the motorcycle shop that is in town. And the reason that I made a specific trip down to that motorcycle shop was because I wanted to buy a bag to put between my legs down here. But I didn't have one to choose from there. They don't have them. <laughs> So it's okay, I can continue to just roll with what I've got, but it just would have made my packing a little simpler. I'll get something in the future. The thing about Hokkaido is that even though there are a lot of people riding motorcycles in the summertime, there aren't a lot of local people riding motorcycles because in the winters, there's it gets so much snow up here and it's so cold for so long that there isn't like a big motorcycle culture. So there's a lack of motorcycle shops and things to buy such things at. And Sapporo is the only place that I can find that has one of the chains that I am familiar with. For breakfast, I just ate at the hotel and it was kind of terrible. They give free breakfasts, but it was just not great, like little chicken McNuggets and stuff. I then chatted with my parents a bit on the way down to the motorcycle shop, which was fun to just drive down the road and call them. The internet is amazing. And then I grabbed some lunch. When you're in Sapporo, you have got to get soup curry. It's like the thing on the menu. And I love vegetable soup curry. It's so good. And this vegetable soup curry was medium good. It was a shit ton of vegetables. An absolute ridiculous number of vegetables. But the flavor of it wasn't really anything to write home about. And the vegetables were fine, but not, not like any better than something I would just get in Tokyo. So it was okay. Uh, the thing that was weird about the experience is when I arrived, it kind of looked closed, even though they had open signs up. And when I went inside, there was nobody there. And like, I was like, hello, like, <laughs> is somebody here? And I had to go in the back and there was a dude like kind of asleep 
on a tatami mat. <laughs> I had to wake him up. And he was, I was like, are you, uh, are you open? And he was like, yeah, we're open. And I was like, Can I, okay, let's, let's do this thing. Let's get these snacks. So it was fine. I wouldn't say that I would like say I would go back. It had really good reviews, but I think that maybe the reviews might be more about like the dude was super friendly and stuff and everybody else that came in there seemed communal, like they were <laughs> regulars. So, I don't know. It was a meal. The plan for today is to drive to the middle of Hokkaido and hit up the national park. And I'm hoping that the campgrounds that I found is going to have a place for me to stay. It doesn't look like it's free, but it looks like it might have really good facilities. And if they do have really good facilities and I feel like it's worth the costs, then I'll probably stay there for a while and spend some time exploring that area and hopefully also finishing up a couple of videos that I need to finish up and hopefully avoiding rain. But it does look like later in the week we will be getting some rain. I'm about halfway done with my drive. It's, I don't know, 2.30 or something, 3 o'clock. I don't know. I don't know what time it is. <laughs> but stop to Michinoki to get an ice cream, give another shot. Hopefully this one's got less ice and more cream. Much smoother, much better than the one that I had with Katie. And now I got a leaky ice cream on my hands. It's been a nice drive. It's kind of uneventful in a way, just kind of going out of the city and then going through. Okay, that kind of got out of hand. <laughs> I continued to try to talk, but then this thing just leaked all over me. It's made a big mess. But basically, I was just saying, it's been a pretty nice drive. It's uneventful, just driving out through rice fields and farms. But of note, when I was in Sapporo, there was a girl that rode past me, and it's like a tall, blonde lady on a bicycle. Like, she sticks out, right? And I just noticed her when she went by. <clears throat> and I pulled in this Mishinoeki, and I went to the bathroom. When I came out of the bathroom, she was pulling up on her bike. And she's come the same distance I have today on a bicycle. <laughs> it's like completely ridiculous. I got nothing. <laughs> just like, she just pedaled. I used dinosaurs, you know what I mean? I've noticed that a lot of people on motorcycle trips up here, when they see other motorbikes, they check the license plate to see where they're from. <laughs> and I started doing it too. The guy in front of me is from Kyoto. So that's quite a voyage if he's come all the way on two wheels, but maybe he did like I did and cheated and took a ferry. Driving through some of these small cities and towns in Hokkaido is giving me a different perspective than I have when I've been up here on train trips or when I was up here even hitchhiking where I wasn't really paying that much attention to things in the way that they look and seem to be functioning because I was in cars with people talking with strangers and I was a bit distracted but when all I have to look at is what's in front of me and I don't have any distractions except for the Mac it gives you time to look at the roads and think, this is just kind of unfriendly to humans, the way that this stuff is designed. There's a lot of just really wide open spaces and a lot of kids just walking for what probably is a very long time to get to school and get home in areas with hardly any shelter or cover. There's not very many trees. There's just a lot of big car prioritized roads with a whole lot of space. And there's some charm to that, but in a living area, I think personally I just prefer to have things be a little tighter together. Of course, the other side of the coin is when you get outside of the cities in Hokkaido. It's pretty amazing. Even these farming areas are beautiful. Look at the clouds. Look how big everything looks. I don't know if that comes across on camera, but if anybody's ever been to Montana, and they, <laughs> there's that thing about like the skies being really big or whatever in that part of the world, this has the same effect. The sky just feels mammoth. Yeah, it's definitive. If you're going to live in Hokkaido, you got to take advantage. Oh, let's go this way. Apparently, there is some artwork. <laughs> I was going to completely go the other direction. Um, we're going to go see if we can see this art. I don't know how far it is. Basically, the situation is, if you're going to live in Hokkaido, take advantage of this and live out here. Look at this. It's amazing. <laughs> Why was I so excited, you ask? 
it's because Tambo Ato is amazing. So when they take a rice field and they plant various different types of rice into the field in a specific way so that their different colors show artwork displayed out on the entire field. And then they will build a tower and you can go up and you can see the artwork that they've made. I think this is amazing. It's quintessential Japan. And it's free to come here. Like you don't have to pay anything, which I think is also just like quintessential Japan. They just want to be like, look at this cool thing that we did. I think there might be a little place here to maybe get snacks or something. I'm not really even sure what the financial motivation is, but I can tell you what my motivation was. It was to see some art and I was not let down because it was Matsuko Diruksu, which is a famous television personality that many people will be familiar with. Everybody in Japan knows this person and it is kind of humorous to be completely honest <laughs> that this is who they've chosen to put on the mural it's not like some ancient historical figure or something like that it's Matsuko Deluxe <laughs> it just really made me laugh when I got to the top and looked down and was like that's good <laughs> that's pretty good but I'm a little bit concerned because you see all those clouds behind me that's where I'm headed and it's possible that it is going to be raining, but it shouldn't be raining long. But I'm gonna to try to avoid raining at all if I can. Speaking of license plates from a long way away, this is the same town I'm from, Tama. All right, let's go into that cloud. <laughs> I'm driving into that cloud and it is starting to rain on me. So this is a bit of a bummer. This was supposed to have dispersed by now. So weather forecast is a little bit off. I guess I'm gonna put on my raincoat stuff <laughs> because I think I might get drenched. I just heard a whole bunch of thunder. <laughs> yeah, tons of lightning just happened. Those lightning warnings, they mean something now. It was fairly mundane until the rain <laughs> and then it got kind of nuts. I got my gear on and I was in fairly good shape except for the fact that like I don't have any good foot covering. A lot of people think just go buy some waterproof shoes that you can wear on the motorbike. Well I don't live in a world where I can walk into a store and buy clothes that fit me so it's complicated and I have little baggies that I can put on my shoes. I just neglected to do it because I'm a fool. So my shoes got really wet. The rest of my body was kind of okay. The issue was that when trucks would pass me because I was going slow because I could hardly see because of all the rain and then my mask fogs up and stuff. It's just not an ideal situation. So I take it really slow and I was on a pretty big road. These trucks would pass me and these buses would pass me and just blast water up on me like a wave. And it was a bit of a bummer and it would just drench everything and again i have the wetsuit on so it's okay but my shoes get really really wet and if that's not happening actually with the way that the motorbike is all shaped you really don't get your feet that wet it just happens to be that if you get hit by a tsunami <laughs> from a bus you end up getting a little bit wet in the feet so it went fine by the time i got to the campsite which is about 30 minutes or so from when the rain started the rain had basically stopped and I went in and thankfully they had a place that I was able to stay. The campsite is really nice actually, like the facilities and stuff. There are showers and nice toilets and uh, kitchen area and I think there might be like a place that you can like do work like on the desk and stuff. I haven't explored everything to its fullest yet because it was getting dark when I got here so I kind of prioritized setting up the tent and got the tent set up and underneath the tree where it was still raining a little bit out on, from not under the tree, but the tree coverage kind of kept it okay. But the ground is soaked right now. <laughs> Thankfully, the tent is pretty waterproof, so I think I'll be okay. But as I was setting up the tent, the skies opened up a bit and cleared out and it looked kind of nice actually to see the sky. Just getting a little moment of the sky after that is kind of like, oh, it's really rewarding. The area that I'm in is seemingly pretty cool. There's a river that's nearby and there's all this fog and stuff over the river and the river is pretty rapid -y, so it has a lot of energy and stuff. And I'm on the perimeter of a national park that I know basically nothing about, but I plan to investigate hopefully maybe tomorrow if the weather is okay. 
But um, after I got everything set up with the tent, I headed into, not town, but there's a little onsen village. If you've been to one of these in Japan, you're going to know what I'm talking about. There's like onsen hotels and stuff that pop up around it, and there's one little Seikomato convenience store that is in this little village, and it doesn't look like a Seikomato. It's like built into the normal style of buildings there. They didn't like make it look like a convenience store. So I pulled up to it, I was like, where is it? I was like, oh crap, that's it. It looks like a ski lodge or something. <laughs> but went in there and picked up some grub, which I'll share with you in a moment. And then I came back to the campsite, it was about 10 minute drive each direction, and wasn't raining much. So I was like driving back with my legs like up like this, trying to dry my shoes <laughs> out from the wind. <laughs> Didn't do very much. And as soon as I got here, there was this huge kaglunk noise like near me, but not directly up next to me. And it was a car that was driving through the woods. I've only seen this in the dark, so I don't know what it's gonna look like in the morning. So maybe it'll look different in the morning, I don't know. But it was like a car. <laughs> It's like driving through the woods and then it comes over to me after this huge, I mean this like mammoth clunking noise. It comes over to me and parks like right next to the tent and this Japanese girl gets out and she's just like, is this a free place to park? And I was like, no, you gotta pay, you gotta pay. it's like a pay parking girl. She's like, oh really? And she like kind of just like, where's she's like, where's, what do I do? Like, I was like, well the front is like, the reception is like up over here and to the left. And I explained this to her and she's like, okay. So then she like went over there and I was like, hey, whatever. So I'm like putting all my food and stuff in the tent, getting things arranged. And I went to check out the showers and get an idea of what I was gonna need to take with me. And when I was walking up there, she was walking back with this white dude who had a bicycle. <laughs> so she drove and he had a bicycle. And um, I ended up talking to him a bit and he's from Spain and he's on a bike tour. And he just met her in another town and now they're going hiking tomorrow. So they're staying in a bungalow together. <laughs> And I walked over and I checked out what she, <laughs> what she ran over with her car. You know, this girl that just showed up came from the woods over here and drove through here and ran over these rocks that are huge with her little car. <laughs> and then just drove up and parked right next to me. <laughs> Look at that thing. <laughs> the fuck? The sound was nuts. It was like ka-junk, ka-junk, ka-junk. And then when she got out of the car, she didn't even blink about it. I was like, is your car okay? She was just like, is it free to park here? Like, no. What the hell's going on? I hope her car is okay, but I probably not, because like these rocks are like, <laughs> her car is like a little K car. Anyway, so I then took a shower, and the showers are nice. 200 yen gets you five minutes of water, and I was like, oh, that's gonna suck. I'm gonna have to use 400 yen, but you can actually pause the water. So you can just like use this like one minute and like get all wet and then pause it and then soap up and then use the rest of it to get everything off. So very happy about that. And the convenience store food is just your standard convenience store sushi. And it's egg and maybe a little bit of fish eggs and cucumber. I mean, they're good. It's like a sushi maki or a salad maki, they call them sometimes, I think. I don't know. And then I've got some inari sushi which looks like kind of like a ball bag, but it's like a sweet tofu. And it's wrapped um, around some rice. I also got a banana in a bag. <laughs> of course. A bag of Doritos. And some umeshu. This is like the world's most standard umeshu. It's like the most popular brand you see it all over the place. It's a little alcoholic drink that um, they make in Japan with um, shochu, or no, chuhai, chu, chu uh, some sort of, what kind of alcohol goes in here? It might be shochu, I don't know. Some sort of uh, liquor, and then they put sugar and liquor, and then they put plums inside of the jug. Katie's making some of it at home, actually for multiple years, so we have like a ton of it. But it's fun, it's a really sweet alcohol, and it's pretty easy to drink. I recommend giving it a try and make sure if you get it, you get one with a couple of plums inside because the plums are the fun part. People tend to either love them or hate them. I think they're good. Be careful though, there's a pit. And other than that, my tent is all set up and I don't have any idea what I'm gonna do tomorrow. I do know that my glasses are in the motorbike underneath the cover, so <laughs> that's why you're getting my naked face at the moment. And I'm going to, I guess, just enjoy my dinner and then enjoy my sleep 
and then figure out what the hell to do tomorrow, which is <laughs> quite fun. Hmm, I gotta say goodbye to an item that has done me so much good and that you've seen a lot of, like every single trip we go on. I am wearing this. It is perfect in every way, shape, and form that I, I have appreciated this thing so much, but it kind of smells bad now. And it's summer and I won't need it on the way home and I need to buy a new one and this is me making myself do it. So hopefully in a future video, you'll see something different or I'll be very cold, I don't know. <laughs> oh, stupid, turn off. <laughs> it's so good up here, man. <laughs> Gosh. You gotta come here and get some corn, y'all. I had the true Hokkaido experience. I'll be dosong cold before the end of the month here. <laughs> I've been listening to Fleetwood Max Rumors, by the way. I think I mentioned it. What a banger of an album. <laughs> yo, yo, can you, can you, can you be a thing? Man, this just ain't right. Oh no. Oh no. Kawaii, y'all.